if you just want to blow shit up for about 10 minutes and then walk away and change a shitty diaper, you can do that. And you can still make rank. <laughs> um, all I know is chicken restaurant bad guy from... <laughs> right. It's like, ooh... Hello, Craig. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see Craig Net again. Craig, we hope you're well. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Retro Rents Retro Gaming Podcast. Is this episode 60 or 61? Um, I'm going to eh, say 61. 61. 61. Yeah, I didn't, cha- I didn't right. change that when I was updating my stuff, so. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. So we are at 61. Holy hell. And it has been a while. I am Retro Rents Al. I'm Nick. And we are back. Uh, obviously, you know, I talked about this on Twitter. It's vacation time. It's summertime. Mm. And we're in the weird COVID era. And, you know, I wanted to try and find something to do with my family. <clears throat> and as far as I was concerned, I just wanted it to be anywhere that wasn't my house. And uh, we rent, <laughs> we rent, we Airbnb a beautiful house down in Cape May, New Jersey. Uh, we've been talking to the owner since December, and obviously, um, since COVID kicked off, uh, every time they've had somebody stay there, like they boot you out promptly at ten in the morning, so that the people, their their company, they contract can come in and do like a fucking deep clean, and I and I mean deep clean because I'll tell you what, when we showed up. Uh, that Saturday, which would be, was that really? No, two, two Saturdays ago now. Um, I have never walked into a house that looked so beautiful and lived in like it never had been lived in. Mm. Like it, it was spotless. Um, it was an absolutely beautiful place. I know she doesn't listen to it, but I'll just give a shout out to Renee. It was one of the greatest um vacation experiences i've had in that you know the house was way beautiful way more beautiful than we thought you know we saw pictures and it looked great but this just blew us away there was a great little patio out back and just sit back outside and chill they had a little propane fire chimenea which was the shit but the top of the line for me was this beautiful above ground heated pool and um which was wonderful and bad um why do you think <laughs> it was bad nick let me hear your your thoughts as a non-parent why do you think a wonderful pool in a house uh would be a bad thing because you don't have to go anywhere for the water see that's the good thing see you're 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 with me you're you're not thinking four-dimensionally as uh, <laughs> Doc brown would say no see that's exactly what me and my father-in-law said uh you girls can go to the beach our beach is outside <laughs> and, <laughs> and we we went one day to the beach and my father and I father and law and I looked at each other and we're like you know yeah I'm glad they get to see the ocean this fucking sucks I wish we were back at the pool <laughs> and we, <laughs> we spent the rest of the fucking week at the pool but you know you know you know what the bad thing is is once you have kids and you treat them to something like that. The first thing out of all three of their mouths, even the baby who can barely put three words together, are, when do we get one of these? <laughs> and uh, so, that, so that's that's the next thing. I'm already starting to make some plans uh, for next summer. I'd like to have you know the whole setup, an above ground pool, little patio, you know, deck, um, and and get that in. Because I'll tell you what, man, I used to have one when I lived in Jersey, and um, and then we had the community pool when I lived over in the Birches. I think you and I started hanging out after I moved over in the Effort area. I don't think you ever saw the old house, did no. you? Nope. Okay, all right. So we were we were chilling by then. So we didn't have the, even the community pool by then. But, like, I, I forgot what it was like just to have a pool in the backyard. You know, like, I, I whipped up some eggs on Monday morning, you know, girls ate and... And, uh, you know, Retro Girl 1.0 was like, let's go swimming. I was like, all right. I just went and got my suit on and we're, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning just swimming in the pool. And and it was just, um, I don't know, like, I forgot how much I enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was just, uh, it was really nice. And 
you know, and, and to get a little real, you know, obviously with, with COVID, uh, my wife and I are very cautious and very cautious, you know, having kids and stuff. And, and so we kind of made all the arrangements. We wanted to at least try to go out for dinner one night. And uh, we've been going to this place every time uh, that we go down there. And it's this really awesome place called Harpoons on the Bay. The food's usually amazing. Um, but we've been following on, the, on Facebook, and they've been very conscious, you know, especially in Jersey, where Jersey, like Pennsylvania, has taken this very seriously. And uh, they were just like, you know, we have X amount of seating to make sure everybody is spaced properly. And, yeah, and they had a whole process. So we went, and... um I'll I'll just give advice. Like if you're in a state taking this seriously, and I, I this is no knock against harpoons. If anything, I I thoroughly appreciate the safeguards they took. You know, it was just the the greedy, selfish side of me that you know thought, oh maybe this will be that taste of maybe normal. And uh, but it was like no, you had to go up. You had to get your you know make your order. Then you walked up and got it, and it was given to you in like a takeout styrofoam tin. And, you know, that's fine. Like, I can deal with that. But it's like you're dealing with kids on top of that. And it was just, like, it was just so stressful. It was so stressful. Because on top of, like, you know, keeping the kids in place. And then you're like, don't go, you know, don't go too close to that person. Keep your mask on. And it was just, like, I remember going back to the house that night. And I was so disappointed. Because that was, like, one of the highlights of my, you know, my trip the years before. And... Like, I look back on it now, and I'm like, that was a really good thing for me. Like, it's just a good reminder of, you know, A, there are people that have it way fucking harder than me right now. And B, like, this is just, normal is new now. This is a new normal. This is different. And um, thankfully, we did that early on in the trip. And I just said, you know, I sat there, kind of pouted you know my on my own after everybody went to bed i was playing some video games and i was just like like and then i'm I'm literally berating myself on a sofa like what the fuck did you expect like this is like what you what we all knew a year ago is just not it's not going to be normal for quite some time and like don't expect that and like like you know i came to peace with that and everything but it was just one of those like i'm you know me dude like i'm a super mm-hmm. optimistic person and like i'm always like sunshine everywhere rainbows whatnot and no but it just really bummed me out and it was one of those like i'm glad it did like i'm glad i had a fucking gut check you know what i mean right but uh, uh but anyway like that aside it was a fucking amazing vacation i spent time with my wife, my girls, uh, nice. my in-laws. It was wonderful. I wanted to get my parents, you know, but it, my mom is still recovering from a really rough surgery from a year mm. before. And it just, she's just starting to get there. And, and we're hoping, you know, very much that come next summer, she'll be in a much better spot health wise. And we'll, we'll bring my parents down too and, and let them have a vacation. But it was wonderful. It was just so wonderful to be somewhere else. That wasn't my house. (laughs) I have to, I have to say, you kind of had a little dose of that with moving and everything. Like, do you kind of appreciate that more uh, in this day and age now that you're living somewhere else that was different from where you've spent, you know, we'll say a majority of the last like 10 years. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like, you know, granted being like a military brat, you know, we always moved like every, every two to three years. There's always something new. Uh, granted, the last yeah. place is probably the longest I've ever been in one location, which is a scary that's thought. A <laughs> that is, but that's a, it's a really good point. Like, what was that like for you? Like, uh, I, it, it, it was, it, well, yeah, I mean, we, it, we talk about normal. It's like, for me, that was normal. It's just like, it was just picking up, moving, yeah. plopping down in a new place. Granted, you know, uh, you know, the past two moves, you know, so it used to be, you know, without, you know, giving away like everything, but it's like, I was, you know, I was closer to like where you, you were at and then I moved farther away and now I moved yeah, like, move, like yeah, yeah. the farthest, but I'm still like within the PA area, still within like driving distance, things like that. But yeah, yeah, sure. But, um, I, I know, just it, mean like, what was it like for you to spend that much time in one place? Cause you and I've been oh, friends a long time. Oh, oh I see. Oh, it's been, uh, my, my dad. Yeah. My dad was an army brat. So like I heard his story, yeah. like, you know, our, our house in, in before we moved to where we are at now, um, or where my parents are now, I should say, 
um, he it was the longest he'd ever stayed in one place. So I was just wondering, what was that like for you to actually like set down roots like that? Uh, that that's a great question. I mean, it, you know, it's a, somewhat a sense of permanence. Like, it, oddly enough, like I never, you know, like I, you know, I put things on the wall, like posters went up, but I never, yeah. you know, you know, went, you know, ham on in terms of like, you know, like you know, full on permanence almost because like, I, you know, somehow either in the back of my head or whatever, it's like, you know, if I have to, you know, pick up and move again. Yeah. For yeah. whatever reason, you know, I didn't want to have that stuff. So I, I guess in, in one sense, I still kind of held on to that mindset. Um, but at the same time, it was just like, it's like, you know, I was able to actually, you know, establish like very long running friendships and whatnot. Uh, yeah. Grand technology helps a lot with that too. You know, because <laughs> yeah, like back so. in the day, you like, you had to become a pen pal and I was never really much for, you know, you know, writing letters or whatever. So oh, uh, good. that's why we got along so well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so, it, you know, it's probably part of it is establishing friendships for that long. Cause I mean, you know, the, yeah. you know, I know people who is like, yeah, they, they went to people with elementary, you know, and they knew from elementary school and they still keep in touch. Like, <laughs> Me is like yeah. I couldn't tell you who I went to school with. <laughs> uh, and it, it's so funny that, like, you know, when you put in that perspective, like when I look at the people I went to elementary school with and the connections, you know, that I still have today. Uh, I think I was talking to my wife about it. Like, I'm like Nick and I are approaching like a 20 year friendship here. Like, like it's been a long time since we like first bumped in. You know, when yeah, I was you're right. Turn and stuff. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, like it, uh, it, and again, like, I think this podcast just shows like, I, I don't think if you're listening to this, <clears throat> you probably don't understand, even if, you know, the hundred, 200, whatever, how many, there's quite a few, you know, and I appreciate that. But, uh, even if you weren't listening, we would probably still be doing this on team speak when not recording. It. <laughs> <laughs> because this is just what Nick and I do. And we, we, it's, it, you know, it's how we became pals and shit, but, um, no, I just, that's a really interesting perspective, dude. Cause I remember my dad even saying the same thing. And, and you, you actually said the same thing he did where it was like, <clears throat> he was like, yeah, you know, I, I had rock star posters. Like he had a Hendrix poster and my, my, my dad's, you know, in his seventies now, yeah, yeah. but he, he was like, yeah, like, and I just like, I never put him up cause I knew we weren't going to be there long. And it was one of those, like, that always stuck with me. And, and hearing you say that, you know, it's like, I look now and it's like, like, I feel, I feel really good for you. And, and, and like my dad, like you finally get a chance to, to plop down roots mm -hmm. and like, I mean, I wasn't an army bat, brat, but Jesus Christ, you knew me in my twenties. I was back and forth between here and Texas every other oh, yeah, day. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I, and I, and I don't even mean to try to say like I understand, but I could slightly relate because like that was I, I loved every aspect of that job, but that because after you know two years of doing that, like it really hits you where it's like I can't, I can't establish roots, I can't. Like I, I had a relationship at the time. Granted, she was half a psychopath, and I, I again, <laughs> I'm not knocking mental illness. She was just she had problems, and and uh, we just we were not good for each other. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll leave it at that. And but trying to keep something like that together and leaving every three weeks and trying yeah. to have a life back home, like it literally became to where I would pack my suitcase for Texas. And, you know, I would go there for 14 days, come home, and I would wash my clothes. I would pack the suitcase again because within two to three weeks, I'd be leaving for another 14 days. And it's like that doesn't sound like a lot until you do it for a year. And it's like you 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 start getting in like that mentality of like I'm living out of hotel rooms. And and I don't want to make it like it was all bad. Like I had a fucking wild hobbiton adventure uh in my 20s uh back and forth in houston texas and got exposed to things uh thanks to an amazing boss uh and co-workers the owner of the company was an amazing dude and uh, he tried to convince me every way possible to move down there so he wouldn't have to fly me out every three weeks but he was cool enough to do that and um 
and I, I grew a lot. Like I grew up a lot in that trip, but like, mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like, like I get, I kind of get what you mean where it's like, I'd come home and it just felt like the home that I had pretty much not grown up in, but that we moved from, from the home I grew up in. Uh, that was, you know, all I knew at the time. It was like, I felt like I was like, yeah, I'm just staying here. You know, I'm rooming for a week or two and then I'm gone. Right. You know, so it's, it, I get it, man. It's just, I, I just think it's really cool that you're in a position now that like you've got a spot, you know, you got your, you got your, you got your lawn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey, fuck off it. <laughs> but, uh, all right. All right. All right. We, we went so real there. And, uh, <laughs> and, and honestly, it's just because like I said, Nick and I do this all the time and we haven't done this for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on vacation. Uh, no, but what have you been playing, brother? Uh, so not too much uh, over the past month or so. Uh, one one game that did, uh, you know, you're playing a lot of World of Warship still, I guess. Uh, but one game yeah, that stood yeah, out. Yeah, I've been playing some of that too. Excellent. Uh, I love and, that game, dude. It's so yeah, fun. It's, it's such a it's great. Chill. It's. Uh, I'm just going to say, it's such, if you're interested in World of Warships, if you're a parent, this game's great. I'm going to tell you why. If you just want to blow shit up for about <laughs> 10 minutes and then walk away and change a shitty diaper, you can mm-hmm. do that. You can do it. And you can still make rank. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great game, dude. I love it. Yeah, but another uh, game that came out on uh, the Epic Store, I think it was free a couple of weeks ago, it came out. It was called Lifeless yeah. Planet. Um, All right. Tell me about this one because I so, missed it. I was probably it, it, at uh, Cape May. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, uh, it's super cool game. It's super, I'd say, linear. It's more of a story. Okay, no, I love I those. I haven't gotten to the end of it yet. I'm intrigued, but the premise is like you're uh, an American astronaut. Okay. And you've landed on this uh, this you know far off planet on you know wherever it's not not in our solar system type of thing. Yeah. And yeah. you land and you're, you know, it's like you're, you're super disoriented. You know, you, you start at your capsule and you see footprints going off in the sand. You're like, Oh no, it's like, we're, we're my crewman. Yeah. Uh, and so, so you start like, you know, start this investigation and eventually you come across this town and there's a flag flapping, you know, from a flagpole and you're like, you're like, you know, it's like, what is this, this town? And the flag is the old USSR, uh, Russian Whoa. flag. And you're like, what is going on? And <laughs> so the story, you know, it leads you through this. It, I, again, it's, it doesn't have like my only complaint would probably be there's no real branching pathways. Like it's pretty right. linear. It's, just, it's a start to finish kind it, of, yeah, kind of yeah, deal. Exactly. But it, it's got a great story to it. It's got a little, you know, it got heart to it. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, that makes up for it. And it's like, you're, you're, you're constantly on this quest of like, why is this all here? What is going on? Yeah. Like, you know, where's yeah. my crew? How do I, I get out of here? Um, so I'd say, you know, if, if it's on like a game pass or if you see it for free, like definitely worth the pickup uh, at that point. Yeah, no, I got to check and see if that's on game pass. That sounds pretty dope. I don't know if I told you, excuse me, about one that I found. Oh, uh, kind of a similar bet, right? Mm-hmm. Have you played deliver us the moon? It's on my wish list. I've, I've been meaning to get around to it on Steam or just wait for it to get super cheap or something. And I, I do want to pick it up because so, I've seen it at PAX as well. Uh, stop w- you know, way being back in the day. Shit. I know. I know. <laughs> and get yourself Game Pass. Get yourself oh, Game, it's on Game Pass, Pass. Ultimate. It's on yes. Game Pass now? Oh, okay. Okay, cool. It's on Game Pass Ultimate. Let me tell you about Deliver Us the Moon. I played it the other night. Mm-hmm. And. It was one of those, like, I looked at the description, I'm like, this sounds really cool. Mission to the moon on a post-apocalyptic Earth. Yeah. Okay. And so the deal is, like, you start out, you're kind of in this, basically, it's a NASA bunker. And you're in there because there's these, like, sandstorms and storms that are just catastrophic. And, like, the big one's coming. And it's like, all right, look, we have patched this shuttle together based on everything we know. And this is our last shot. We know we had a base on the moon. We're not sure what happened. You're our last hope. Like, get up there and let us know if we have another home. And, like, you go through 
and you're going to the base and it's like one of it's like isolation alien isolation where there's like tape recordings and and uh holograms where you're you're starting to get more and more info about the world and the thing that will stick with me forever out of any game i ever played is you're going into mission control and i'm 90 percent sure you're in houston texas which is now a total desert and you're going through the old mission control and you yourself are like booting up all of the systems and computers to get the shuttle going and mm-hmm. like it's like all right boom, all right engines are good blah, blah blah and then you have to run out to the ship and jump inside the shuttle like, <laughs> oh and man you get in there and then like you got a fucking you know posted note of all the switches you got to hit in order and you got to do this you know with the controller it's like flip 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 and then the fucking ship goes up like dude that was and i, I have to go back and play it but I, I played it the other night. It was probably one of the most exhilarating 10 minutes I've ever had in gaming was booting that shuttle up and like, Oh my God, am I going to get, I'm going to hit this. Oh shit. Got to hit this and that this. And like, and then gravity broke. And like, oh. you, see your shit in the, you see your shit in the cockpit kind of floating around. And it's like, you've made it. And I, I literally sat there on the couch and I was like, yes, <laughs> 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 it was, it was it, and again, like Amber just looked at me like, "You're such a douche! Like you're such a geek!" And I'm like, "You don't understand! I just launched a fucking shuttle!" <laughs> and like, I know you could totally relate to this, but I'll say this much: like, she even got into it. She's like, "This is really cool." Um, but yeah, it, I'm telling you, brother, and this is something uh, we'll get to later in the cast, like. You know, everyone loves to talk console wars and stuff, and and I'll still say that everyone's a, a winner uh, in this gen. Mm-hmm. Game, Pass, Game Pass, dude, is just offering you chances to look in some of the greatest games. Um, so we'll go back to that. Sorry, Lifeless Planet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Let me see. Is that on Steam? Uh, that's a good question. I know, I know it's it was on. Uh... Epic Game Store. I don't know if it's. Oh, oh, okay. So it's, it's an Epic game. All right. So, uh, what do you think? Buy, don't buy. What, what's your? Uh, I, again, you know, uh, the, the fact that like if there's no real deviation from it, more or less, and it's kind of a quasi platform, um, which is fun. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm fine with a linear a, game. A super story cheap, good. super it's, cheap, or slash free slash if it's if it's part of like you know subscription, you know. Okay, oh, you're right. Be. No, I already got it. I must have paid attention. I have that one. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm in, I'm installing that. I will awesome. play that at another time. There you go. Um, nice. So what else? Uh, what else have you been playing, watching, or whatever? Uh, so uh, just just <laughs> yesterday was with the the parents for the weekend. They're doing good. Uh, but we watched. I'm so happy to hear that. Watch Pop, Pop doing okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's doing. He's doing great. Good. Please send him my best. Yeah, will do. He, I still think I have a career because of that man today. He, <laughs> he was my glowing reference that got me into a door I probably should have never walked through. There you go. <laughs> but no, that's awesome. Happy to hear it. All right, so movie you were watching? The movie it was Greyhound, uh, the new Tom Hanks. It, Tom it, Hanks it, movie, yes. yeah. It's come out on Apple Plus TV right it. now. Yeah, you need Apple Plus TV to see it right now. Uh, I'm sure eventually, like you know. Because because the thing is, it was supposed to be released in theaters around the, you mm-hmm. know this time, but obviously with yeah, with they're COVID, all trying that, a different a different thing. I get it exactly. So the, basically, every, you know, all the movies are more or less kind of signing on to various uh, studios right now. Some have gone to Amazon. I think you know Apple was able to snag this one. Yeah, sure. Um, but fantastic movie, like like really. I I, I mean, I, I put it on level. You know, the same like uh, I say military level of like Saving Private Ryan. Wow. Uh, Band of Brothers. Uh, really? You know, That's just, my favorite military series of all time. Yeah. yeah. Now, granted, this is a movie, but it, it's that scale of like they do things super they accurate. Right. It, it's it's a very technical movie. Like you don't need to know a lot about, you know, uh, being you know, on the ocean to, to understand it. But if you do understand it, you get a, that much greater appreciation oh, for cool. what's going on. And, you know, and it it's surprisingly a relatively short movie i think it's only like 90 minutes 
But no shit. Man, that is a cool but but here's the thing: like, it did not feel like 90 minutes I was watching because it, like, almost from the get go, you're just boom going. And I'll it put just, it to you this way: like, and it does Tom not Hanks, stop. Yeah, and Tom Hanks. When's the last time you ever said I saw this movie with Tom Hanks and it sucked? Yeah, right. <laughs> And especially like, when it comes to like real. the military stuff, because like I, I swear, like it's like his, his pet hobby, you know. Ever since, uh, you know, kind of, you know, you look at like Saving Private Ryan may have been one of the earlier ones. Maybe, maybe even like you could say Apollo thirteen grounds not military, but that I'd that even whole... rewind it further. Remember when he did From the Earth to the Moon, and like uh, he true, yeah, he yeah. yeah. every episode. Yeah, but you tell he's really into it. Yeah, so like he's like he's like into the, the this you know history and. Uh, any any historical, I say, fiction or you know, uh, or even nonfiction for that matter, that he's involved with, like he he loves that history and loves being as as accurate as possible. Well, still Not maybe to mention, even telling I think story. Junior Junior did too. I mean, he he showed up in uh, Band of Brothers, Mister Colin sure. Hanks. Yeah, yeah. And he was phenomenal. Like I was like, all oh, right, the Hanks dynasty lives on. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm 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 actually really glad to hear that uh, because it's one of those like I've been back and forth like you know uh, and I'll ask you this straight up. All right, that that's almost an insta sell to me because I'm a huge Tom Hanks fan, especially anything he does military movies. Like it's almost a guarantee. Have you found other stuff that's Apple TV exclusive that you would say is is worth? Jumping so, aboard? so that's the crux of it. Um, uh, my parents were able to see it because they uh, they, they got some new iPhones and it, it came with like a free year <laughs> of, of Apple TV. Right now, <laughs> there's really nothing on there. there. There's like a they have a I few shows, seen. but it really nothing else really draws the attention. So it's like, oh, this is such a bummer. So yeah. that be, that being said, you know, one I'm gonna I'm gonna purchase this once it's available because because that's the other kicker. So it's you know it's on Apple TV, but you can't even buy it. You, know, you can't even buy it. Yeah, it's iTunes or, or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Six once months that's done, now. Yeah, exactly. Once that once that point, like absolutely, this is, this is a hands down must buy. I'm almost kind of sad because it's it really feels like this this should have been something to actually like this would yeah. been see in theaters. Like this is would would have been a must see. You're you're hitting it on the the head. Like I feel like the best thing any film company can do right now. Now, granted, I would say they probably got paid a shit ton and a biscuit to make that an exclusive deal. Oh yeah. And Apple has the money, and I can see Microsoft fronting the same money because you know, I have I have professional experience where I'm at right now. <laughs> they got fucking money to throw around, so I get it. Like they want to get people to the service, sure. and that's tempting. But where I think it's such a big risk is it's like that's a new movie. It's a uh, you know I don't want to say a new IP because it might it's based on a a real story, right? A real uh, history. Well, it, it inspired by true events. So, so it's a okay. it's a historical fiction, but obviously there were, dis, you know, destroyer right. escorts that transported you know uh, yeah. supply routes to to England, and so this, there isn't. I don't think there is a USS Greyhound. Um, right. Didn't they even do. know we were overdue for two weeks. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was in the bomb. It was in the bomb. Hiroshima <laughs> <laughs> uh, No, no, I, I follow you. And, and the reason I bring that up is like, um, you know, if I'm going to subscribe to a service. Yeah, you want to make sure it's worth it. I want it to be worth it. You know what I mean? And like, but a certain gold lining can fucking pull me right in. I subscribe to CBS access, whatever the hell it was. Because Picard was fucking amazing. Oh, like, sure. Oh, yeah. Did you, did you watch that? Yeah, it was, it was yeah, great, we, great series. It was fucking awesome. Like, it was one of those, like, I, I was telling my uncle, uh, Uncle Mikey, I, I saw him today. I was like, look, I'm like, you get free trial offers all the time. And I'm like, and you have nothing to do with your life. <laughs> so I was like, take that seven-day free trial, sit in your room, for three days and watch every goddamn episode of that, and you're gonna be blown away because he's mm-hmm. a big TNG fan. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, if you're a TNG fan, like th- this oh, is right up your alley. 
It's such a nice God, return. Was that good. Yeah, yeah. Just the, the, but yeah, like that that pulled me in. You know what I mean? And like for sure. Um, but yeah, no, I I definitely I really want to see Greyhound because I've I've heard a lot of good about it, and you know both of us have been Hanks fans for God knows how long, and um, y- you just know they're gonna do it well. But uh, oh yeah, no, I, I'm just glad. Like again, I value your opinion, and I know when you say a movie's great, I'll enjoy it, and when you go meh, I'll yeah. avoid it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but um. As far as me, I have been playing uh, a bunch of stuff. I actually forgot to put it in the agenda. Uh, so I picked up Ghosts of Tsushima. Oh, uh, yeah. How's that? Four. Fantastic. Um, a lot of the reviews I'm reading about it are... <sighs> I think people wanting it to be more than it is, and it's one of those, maybe it came out a little late. It's a fantastic open world game it has all the great stuff that makes the witcher great assassin's creed great it doesn't do anything new it just does in my opinion a story setting that very few things dive into and now you and i are big john woo fans Uh, Mm -hmm. we're big fans of like you know samurai films and other stuff and martial arts and this is great if nice. you like that stuff. Yes. It's it's awesome. Um it has a lot of great it, it, obviously the open world aspect is done beautifully. The environments are just fucking gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. Um again, it doesn't do anything new. I mean, it's the same thing where it's like you have a side quest over here and you can go do the main story over here or you can go and like wander around. The general gist is like you're playing um you know, you're you're in the Tsushima province. The Mongols are invading Japan and they have captured your uh, home, you know, your home land home uh, i can't remember the name of the territories in that time but uh yeah and your your master uh who is your uncle the samurai master is taken prisoner by the mongols and you try to free him and you know obviously you get thrown off a bridge like in any other good samurai movie <laughs> down a waterfall and you yeah. make your way back from you know being broken and it's all about um what I what I I think is so genius about this, and again, if you're not really into samurai lore and you don't really get that, like I would recommend, like, kind of get a little primer before you play it, because like again, people like Nick and I, we know the shit. Like we played the shit, we've watched the shit, um, and the the most interesting conflict in this game to me so far comes from the main character that you play whereas mm-hmm. you were you are a samurai but if you want to win this war against the mongols you can't be a samurai like the samurai are of the mindset you face your enemy head on you let your enemy see you coming and you fight you know with with eyes on you you don't stab in the back and the whole thing that makes this game in my opinion just genius from a story standpoint is making you subtly you know quest by quest step by step betraying those values for the betterment of the place that you you love and fight for like you start becoming quote unquote a ghost you're attacking from the shadows you're you know taking over places by yourself without anybody seeing you and if you understand yeah like if you understand samurai code like this goes against everything they're all about right and uh the characters that you team up with are like well do you want to do that and die or do you want to fucking save this place like it's a really really good game um i would say go into it like don't expect it to be anything groundbreaking from a feature standpoint, it has all the great stuff that made The Witcher 3 fun, Assassin's Creed Odyssey fun, nice. like all that. You know, it has all that. Just go into it expecting more of the same fun stuff in a really brilliant, beautiful setting. And it's it's a good game. It's a good game. Uh, so yeah, Ghost of uh, Tsushima, definitely worth picking up. However, 
if I had to pick my gem of the past month, and I say this, I discovered this yesterday or the day before, two days ago. Um, and I think you played this at PAX, and I kept walking. Uh, Carrion. Uh, yeah, yeah, just released this week, so. <laughs> it's on Game Pass. Mm-hmm. And that's why I picked it up, because it's one of those, I don't know if I would have bought it, um, based on the Facebook ads that they had and the, the video promos that I saw. It was sure. like, it looked cool, but I was like, okay, what? What is this? Like, I saw two ads, and I'm like, which person am I playing? Am I playing the guy that just got eaten by the thing coming <laughs> out of the pipes? Or am I playing the thing coming out of the pipes? Um, Carrion is fucking brilliant. It is a... What would you call those graphics? 16-bit? Uh, yeah, kind of retro 16-bit, yeah. Yeah, like a retro 16-bit style graphics. Uh, Metroidvania where you know obviously you can you start in one place you can't access everywhere and you have to evolve and get powers to get to different places and um yeah that's all well and good except in this game it's it's what i'm i'm liking this new genre i'm hearing about called reverse horror where Mm -hmm. this game you're playing basically the thing uh, from john carpenter John Carpenter's the thing. You are the great tentacled monster that gets out of your test tube and all you want to do is get out. And everything about this game is done so fucking flawlessly. Like, I raved about it. Like, I I said it on Twitter the other night. I'm like, I played this on Game Pass. I never would have picked it up. I instantly went to the Microsoft store and dropped the 20 bucks for it. And I can probably count on one hand how many times I've done that. (laughs) Like, I was just like, this game is so genius and so great. Like, I just want Devolver Digital to get another fucking feather in their hat. Because let's face it, you and I have seen this between PAX and everything else they do. Nobody does weird as well as Devolver Digital. Oh, yeah, they, they they are the definition of. I mean, have you have you seen their E3? Well, I, well, even you know oh. any any E3, let alone the, the most recent one. But it's all this kind of like just over the top, just craziness, just craziness. And like, I'll be the first to say, Daddy will tell you, uh, they're not all home runs. Uh, they're not. <laughs> But this one could be, in my opinion, the best thing they've ever put out. It is ridiculously fun. Um, I sat there last night and I played it from, or the night before, sorry, probably like 6 p.m. until like midnight. I couldn't put it down because like, like you'll... You know, you're crawling through the pipes of this like big, you know, uh, what what was that? Um, shit, what was that Black Mesa? Not the Black, not the uh, Half Life game, but the one where it was like the kind of Metroid style one. Hmm, Half Life Metroid. Not uh, yeah, shit. Where? Uh, oh, God damn it, Nick. <laughs> it, was, it was like was it half life it was like something underground or something oh son of a bitch well anyway it was it was one of those where it was like you're you're playing this character in- infiltrating a base and like right. you had to get like different key cards and all this shit you played the hell out of it so i'm i'm just surprised you don't oh i think i know yeah we played a shadow cabin, I think. Oh shadow, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, sh- yeah, yeah sh- shadow is something. I know what you're talking about. Uh, what was it? Uh, ah, fuck. Anyway, you know what I'm getting at. Um, shadow complex. It, shadow complex. Thank you. It was, <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of got that feel to it, but it's it's like the opposite. Like you're trying to get out. You know, from the inside, yeah, you're and, playing "quote unquote" the bad. Well, the, you know, the bad thing, and you're just like you're you're munching on you know scientists and. <laughs> I don't think of... he's so bad. I think he's just hungry. 
<laughs> but, but yeah, no, that's dude. what I loved about the concept. Like when I saw Pax, like this is hel- <laughs> so it's like good. it's like this dark humor hilarity of like, yeah, you're playing the bad guy. It's like it's, you're not playing the hero. You're playing the bad guy trying to get out. Dude, there's nothing more hysterical than like crawling through the pipes, and it's like, oh look, you come through a grate, and you just see like this arms guard walking back and forth and it's like right stick tentacle down grab up we go (laughs) (laughs) oh dude it's such it's such a genius game like i just i can't give devolver digital enough credit on this one like the fact they put it on game pass like if you have game pass and you haven't played this yet like go get your whatever it is 9.99 a month's worth and play this game it is awesome I had so much fun with it, and I'm I'm still playing it. I haven't beaten it yet, but I know I will because like it's one of those like I just want to keep playing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, carrying genius. Uh, now, as far as watching, you watched Greyhound, very serious. And I I appreciate that. So you have Netflix, right? Uh, well, I, I turn it on right now. It's off because uh, I feel like I've gone through everything at this point. Uh, have you gone through Norseman? No, what, I, I, I don't think I've even heard of it. Okay, so there's three Vikings, seasons but... of it. There's okay. three seasons of it. Go resubscribe. And I'm not even kidding. I watched the first two episodes and practically pissed my pants. So imagine if Vikings met Monty Python, Simon Pegg, and Nick Frost. Oh, really? <laughs> Yes, it is that kind of humor, but really good production values, and it is absolutely hysterical. I I saw the first two episodes, and I was just like, how the fuck did I miss the other two seasons, you know, three seasons of this? Norseman mm-hmm. is a riot. Like... Like, oh god, maybe this is where we start thinking about adding that video element. But uh hold on one second here. Because this will test if we can hear the voicemail. Um let's see. Uh voicemail uh Norseman, let's do a Norseman preview. All right. So I'm gonna send you the link and then let's see if uh I- I'll play it here. You know, just play it muted, and I'll I'll play the sound. Um, all right, I'm going to send it to you privately. Yes, everybody, we're breaking the fourth wall. Fuck it, <laughs> do it. Never happens here. All right, so you got the link? Yep. All right, ready? I'm going to play it. Okay. Well, Can you hear it? I'm hearing it, yep. Naked people? That's real, I'm yep. there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the attitude is probably the most honorable thing you can do. Honor is really important, though. Yes. Now, to Valhalla! <laughs> wow. I'm just going to skip the whole thing, okay? I'm not going to jump either. This is not my kind of thing. <laughs> we found a way west. We will never again have a lean year, no matter how cruelly the substitute chief manages the village while I'm away. Hey, well... <laughs> Brother, <laughs> own chieftain. Try firing an arrow with really cold fingers yourself before you start doing. <laughs> I'm trying to get some sort of cultural lift, and I really want something like that to happen here. It seems like they've completely lost their focus. <laughs> <laughs> they are the easiest job in the world. Sit on the vault, stab people with swords. It's as basic as you can possibly get. <coughs> so any fear now, folks. Remember nothing sexier than self-confidence. <laughs> Don't look at me, it's your husband. <laughs> walk around with horns on her helmet. It looks ridiculous. Fashion is about taking chances, daring to be bold. The helmet is a basic head cover. But when you add some other material, it becomes something else. It's no longer just a helmet. It is something bigger. It tells a story. And that is what fashion is all about. Oh, I see you on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. Dude, I'm telling you, that is literally worth reactivating your Netflix subscription for. I, it, 
it's that, and apparently there is three seasons of it. I'm two episodes in, and nice. I'm dying. it's great. I mean, yeah, good comedy. Oh, <laughs> uh, and I'm telling like anybody listening, like in these crazy times, if you just want to laugh, if you like Monty Python, if you like Shaun of the Dead, if you like that kind of stuff, Norseman on Netflix is hilarious. I'm loving it. But uh, yeah, no, I had to. I had to tell you about that, dude. I thought about you right away. I was like, oh man, he'd fucking he'd love this. <laughs> but ooh, excuse me. All right, let's move on to releases now. I know we got some showcases to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Ubi showcase. Uh, yeah, Valhalla. It, it's the only. It's it like I thought. Cyberpunk was my top game. For the winter season, this might be fighting for first place. Oh, boy. Saying. Well, if anybody couldn't figure out in the last uh, minute and a half, I really like fighting <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, and I will say what I've seen of Valhalla, especially the, the gameplay video they released, um, it looks fantastic. looks great. Um, I, I like that Assassin's Creed as a series is finally just they're accepting like, hey, we're going to do that modern bit for like two minutes in the beginning and then you can forget about it and play Vikings uh, or Pirates or whatever the hell they're, or Greece, you know, whatever they're they're trying to do. Uh, I think Valhalla looks amazing. It's kind of embracing that that whole like, you know, look into the mythos, so to speak. So you're fighting these, you know, gods and, and whatnot. Yeah. Well, did you play Odyssey? No, but I've seen it. I've seen it played. And I see what you're talking. You know, I think we were talking about this at one point. But <laughs> we were. We're. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah, you're yeah. fighting. You know, like these mythological be- beasts during the time period. It's like, ooh, that's an interesting take on. And Odyssey did it really well, and I think Valhalla is going to be the the crowning achievement. I will say this before uh, uh, Valhalla comes out: if you haven't yet, I think it's like. And again, if you want to just drop 10 bucks for a month, get the Uplay subscription, then you can download, you know, any of their games. And where I think uh, Ubi does it right, and I think uh, EA does the same thing. Like They give you, like, the Ultra Collector's Edition to play. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, Odyssey is worth running through. But, yeah, Valhalla looks great. Uh, Watchdog Legion... I think you and I are on the same page here. I think we keep seeing the same thing. I think it looks... I think the idea is very cool. Like this whole recruiting uh, random NPCs. Uh, yeah. To- I lo- like, you know everyone's going to want to run around. Well, at least I do. I want to go find Granny. <laughs> yeah, granny oh, dude, beat everybody wants fucking Granny. I want Granny to beat people with her purse <laughs> and we'll make the world a better place. That's right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it looks cool. Um, my only concern right now, I, I would say, is I think we've seen the same thing from Legion. Uh, uh, pretty much every reveal. I mean, they show you a little more of it, but it's like, it's the same concept. Like, let's let's see a little bit more meat to this. Uh, yeah. Granted, I'm not trying to be tough guy. I'm, I've already got it pre-ordered. Uh, I think I'll enjoy the hell out of it. But I just, I would love to see, um, it's like you said, I'd like to see continuous gameplay, not the vertical slice. That's a genius uh, statement. I did not do that. Nick did. And I think he's, <laughs> I think you're spot on. I think you're totally yeah. spot on. I mean, and, and this isn't uncommon. You know, like we often will see the, you know, I mean, we saw a lot of vertical slice with Valhalla, <laughs> but we actually got some a decent lengthy gameplay. Yeah. I think what we it was got a good some hour. Gameplay on that. Yeah, it was like, a good yeah. hour. Great. It's like, okay, I, I get a good feel for like, okay, you know, we, we got the vertical slice in the initial showcase, and then I think after the showcase, they had like an hour of, uh, of gameplay. It's like, okay, so all the slice and it's like seeing the gameplay, it's like, okay, I can see where th- these par- parts fit in. I can see how yep. playing uh-huh. for, you know, extended period of time, this is what it's going to feel like. My my <laughs> biggest, I, I see concern, and again, and I, I'm leaning more towards picking it up, uh, the Watch Dogs yeah. Legion. It just looks fun. Yeah, it looks but, fun. My concern is that it'll it'll fall into the same kind of trappings that um uh oh uh, what is it um wild uh, not I don't know. I keep on saying wild mouth but that's it <laughs> um uh, wildlands 
uh, the, the, oh, yeah. the, the yeah. Wildlands fell into, where, which was kind of the same thing. Like if, if you took a vertical slice of Wildlands and I think even uh, Breakpoint, you know, copies that apparently a lot too. Um, I was going to say, I, I wouldn't even say Wildlands because I think Wildlands delivered on what it sold. I think Breakpoint fell very short. And I, I think Breakpoint, which is what you're getting at, they showed you everything the game had to offer. In, yeah. Like, in the trailer yeah yeah it's kind of like that and it's like it's like yeah you, you go to like you know these locations and this this is where like the, you know all these things kind of happen but then you have all this like in between stuff that is just like boring as hell where you, you're just you're granted wildlands was like a lot of travel time type of thing or but it was fun setup. travel time like, i gotta give that to wildlands yeah like, yeah that's true yeah wildlands you, you got a view and like you could actually set up and you're know, like oh let's roll in with the chopper or let's you know yeah, like, that, was, that was in, like the narcos you know series yeah. time on netflix like they did it okay like it, it you know it might have fallen short to some people but i would say you know when you look at wildlands in retrospect that was a really good game like <laughs> not you know not a masterpiece by any means but like where I think Breakpoint fell short is like the trailer was like, this is Wildlands, except you can't run down a mountain and <laughs> you might break your leg. Right. And it was like, oh, okay. Oh, wait, you mean that's the whole fucking game? <laughs> yeah, so that, that's that's my concern. Is like, how does, how does the whole narrative kind of yeah. fit together with Legion? It's like, is it going to just gonna be a lot of like, go to this place and either infiltrate or like the, the part that's drawing me is like, okay, you can choose how you want to do it. You can do infiltration. Yeah, I like you that. can go in through like the front that. door, you know, guns blazing. You know, I love that. Worker yeah. going. I love that. Yeah, that's like, dope. There's, there's a huge level of dynamics. here. It's like, that looks great, but it's like, okay, how does this, how does this work in terms of the entire narrative? Like our, you know, granted, we saw a little bit, I guess, where it's like, you know, granny got caught. And so someone else had to, you know, be taken over or, you know, used. Yeah. How's this feeling the entire nerve? Like, are you going to be you know, restricted to certain characters at certain points, or like, you know, are they going to be kind of like these? I want to, I don't want to say speed run, but um, you know, ma- marathons where it's yeah. like, can you use Granny the entire time, or right. do do you have to, you know, at some point change up type of thing? You know, I, I would think you have. To, I would think you have to change up just because the whole point of the game is building up your team. So right, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised about that. Where I'm hopeful is like. All right, let's rewind a couple years ago, right? Mm-hmm. They fucking made Watch Dogs 1 out to be like the second coming of Hacking Christ. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, like I bought that game. I was so excited for it. I hated that game. I hated it. And I had a couple reasons for hating it. One, the protagonist, whoever wrote that game, should be slapped with a trout. Um, just because... I've never had to play a more hateable protagonist. Not because he was evil. Not because he was a bad guy. Not because, you know, whatever you can think of. He was just the most boring motherfucker I ever had to play as in a game. And if I wanted to do that, I would just play a game with me in it. Um, Like, it was horrible, in my opinion. Like, and what, And on a gameplay front... It had so much you could do, so much you could play, except it was all laid out for you on a map. Like, mm. every single point of interest was right there. Go ahead, go play pinball in the park with a fucking statue head or whatever weird shit they came up with. And, again, these were really great original ideas, but it was one of those, like, it was just all there. Everything you could do was laid out like a waypoint, and... Like, it reminded me of MMOs you and I used to play when they first came out, where it's like you needed waypoints because people were like, well, I'll remap. Right. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it was one of those, like. Was there just, no, like, discovery? It was just, it was just all there. No. Oh, everything wow. was there. And then you throw in, again, like, watch some watchdogs, like, put in, like, watchdogs, bad protagonist, and just watch this idiot. Like, I, I I'm not I'm not even knocking the voice actor like I'm really not because I I think the voice actor was doing the very best he could with the shittiest written material I've ever seen like it was just one of those like I cannot and I've connected with heroes and stories I've connected with villains in games that I'm playing where it's like yeah I'm with you dude let's do this you think you're right well we'll go on this ride. 
And I was like, I don't even know what the fuck this guy's doing. Like, it, it was so bad. So when I played Watch Dogs 2, it was evident to me that, like, they heard something. I wasn't the only one bitching about that. And I would say Watch Dogs 2 is a really good game. I think it's the game we all wanted Watch Dogs 1 to be. And if you haven't played Watch Dogs 2, it's worth a play. It's a good game. And if you get that Uplay subscription, you can you know, just throw that on your download. There list. you go. Uh, it's a good game. It's a definitely good game. So I will say that if they make the same leap of um, leap forward that they made from one to two, this will be a great game. But I'm with you. We've seen a vertical slice. I'm a little hesitant at the limited amounts that we've seen. Um, but I have a Uplay subscription, so it's like a Game Pass subscription. And I know I'm feeding into the new consumer way to be. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's better than dropping 70 and being pissed off like I was sure. with Watch Dogs 1 and throwing out my front window. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, but I think there's something there. Uh, yeah, Far Cry 6. Um, all I know is chicken restaurant bad guy from... <laughs> right. It's like, ooh. Mm-hmm. It, funny enough, like, I know that's from, you know, Breaking Bad, uh, but it's like, for me, like... Kind of my first debut with him was from The Mandalorian. He has uh, yes, Moff Gideon. It's like it's like oh Moff Gideon. It's like oh man. So I but it's also Far Cry. So it's like mm, I'm I'm gonna wait for this thing to be discounted slash you know on a so subscription you, service before I, I look to pick this up. So you never watched five years of From the Earth to the Moon's Buzz Aldrin be a uh, uh, kingpin drug dealer? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Dude. Oh, Christ. Why am I blanking on his name now? Uh, Walter White, the guy that plays him. I, I know him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, if you remember his real name, I'm Brian really Cranston. Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. He was an inc- incredible Buzz Aldrin in From the Earth to the Moon. For sure. And, and um, I'm telling you, Breaking Bad is a series like you know everybody has their opinions but i will say there are very few series i've watched in my life and i was an x files churchgoer like i went i had my smoking cigarette at 10 years old to be the cigarette smoking man in the middle of x you know x files church uh but like i watched every episode of that and like the ending was all right you know it was one of those like it kind of let me down a little bit just because you figured it would be so much better. Breaking Bad was one of the first series next to HBO The Wire uh, that ended in a way where it was like, you know what? You know, everyone talks about the Sopranos ending and they're still talking about it because, oh, what would have happened? Blah, 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 blah. But you know what? Nobody talks about the Breaking Bad ending. You know why? Because it was fucking perfect. It was one of those like, you are ending an epic on the best way it could end. And it was a good show. It was a great show. My wife and I binged that while um, she was pregnant with our first daughter. And we watched, you know, five seasons of it once I hit the uh, work from home period. And it's a great, great series. Um, I have no idea what got us on that. Oh, uh, Far Cry 6. And uh, the guy that played uh, Chicken Restaurant Bad Guy. He's a bad motherfucker. That's all I'm going to say. Did I lose you, Nick? No, sorry. Uh, I, need to press <laughs> the, I need to press the button when I talk. How about I do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think he's going to be... You know, if there's one thing about the Far Cry games, uh, even Far Cry 5, I love the villains, man. The villain of Far Cry 5 was amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I fully expect like yeah, it'll it'll be a decent you know story for an FPS, but uh, I don't know it, because it's Far Cry, it's like I usually end up just waiting for it to you know go go out down to like sale price or something like that. Yeah, down to sale price, but uh, I'll tell you what, when you when you play that game multiplayer, <laughs> that's oh, sure. where it gets that's where it gets silly. <laughs> uh, no, it's a, it's a good game. I'm I'm excited to see it, but I, I gotta say, uh, we're gonna go to our next section here and. Um, I'll just preface it with this. I made a tweet on Twitter 
and I stand behind this a thousand percent. Um, I think that in this gaming generation that we're coming up on, you know, everyone likes to talk console wars and who's the winner. <clears throat> I truly think that we are all winners uh, in this current generation. I'm going to tell you why. Um, especially, and again, not everybody's in a position that I am, and I, I recognize that. But uh, every system that's out there right now has something amazing to offer if that is your thing. And like Microsoft, the Game Pass ecosystem, the ability to play the majority of the, all the cool games they debuted that we're about to talk about between PC and Xbox and their cross save because of the way they have the, the infrastructure set up. That's amazing. Sony, let's be real. The best exclusives that have come out in the past five years are on the PlayStation. Spider-Man, mm -hmm. one of the best games ever made. It was great. And you know, like I like comics and I've read them, but like, I wasn't like foaming over Spider-Man until I heard my buddy Los and a couple others talking about it. Captain Mike and a couple other guys in the podcast community, bad fodder figures and the talking place respectively, uh, or reverse those. But anyway, um, and you know, when I picked up a PlayStation and Kyle, Kyle was a, a big proponent of PlayStation. He showed me PSVR and he, uh, you know, showed me God of War and all these exclusives like PlayStation for one of a kind, incredible games that you're not going to get anywhere else. PlayStation. But you throw in the Switch. Like, you know, graphically, we all know, like, it's got its thing and it, it, it is purposely locked into a certain point. And where the Switch kills everybody is portability. Like, the ability to take your Switch, sit on a couch while everybody else watches TV. Like, even, it doesn't matter if you're a parent or not. Like, the ability to take your game wherever you want to go and sit in a corner and play it, that's huge. And the Switch nails that. And so, like, what I'm getting at is, you know, Microsoft Showcase. I think a lot of people were starting to dig at Microsoft again, where it's like, oh, you're exclusives, you're exclusives. And I think Microsoft rightfully uh, learned the lesson from the last generation, uh, Crackdown 3, that exclusives for them don't matter. And I'm glad that they've kind of thrown the towel in there uh and said, like, the reason to buy our system, not even our system, and this is where I think, and Nick, I'd love to hear your input on this. They're not saying buy our console. They're saying buy our service. And where I think it's genius is it's like, they're saying, if you've already got a great gaming PC, buy X Pass, you know, uh, Game Pass Ultimate. You'll get to play all the games you saw at the Microsoft showcase that we're about to talk about, they're all going to be on there. Yeah. And it's definitely, I, I think we kind of saw a little bit in the last E3, but they were, they were more like, Ooh, new consoles on the way, but we're, but they didn't really talk about it. When we got to the showcase this year, which is kind of the stand in for, for the E3, it was, for, it was yeah. very much that it's like, yeah, we got a console, but you know what? Here's, here's all these games coming on game pass and you can play it on both. And, and I think that's the marketing genius behind it. It's like, okay, you're not, you know, because in previous years, it always felt like they were kind of not really shunning, but uh, maybe leaving out the PC crowd, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, more or less rightfully so, because they would only launch on the console version. Um, but I, I think they've struck a great chord where it's like <clears throat> launching on the pass. And yeah, I'm sure that, like some things will be only be on the console for the launch and then eventually it makes its way to PC. Oh. But it seems like they're more and more bridging that gap. Uh, and definitely, like I think, because I think even the architecture is run off of what, like, what Windows Ten, I think, uh, for yeah. the new Xbox. And so it's like they kind of bridge that gap. It's like, yeah, you can buy the console; it's it'll be ready to play things right out of the box. Nothing wrong with that. 
or if you have a PC that's ready to go, boom, you can you can put on your PC. Yeah. And that's exactly what they're going for. And and I'll even kind of correct just based on my, you know, input on the ground. They're not and at first I'm like what are you doing? This is kind of stupid. And now I realize the genius of it. It's like, they're not, they're saying everything you saw, every single game that we're about to talk about from the Microsoft showcase is on PC and Xbox game pass. And what they said with that was, if you don't have a thousand dollars to build a really cool gaming PC, that's going to last you 10 years. Well, if you've got, if my sources are to be believed, uh, three ninety nine or four uh, or or uh, four fifty to buy the next you know console generation, then you can play all these, and that's like the top of the line. If I understand it right, you know console generation, mm-hmm. and where I think that's genius is they're hitting both markets. They're hitting the markets that you were just talking about, where it was like. You know, hey, we're PC gamers too, and we're why you're actually here. And then, you know, then there's the console gamers where they're purposely saying, like, look, not everybody can build uh, the gaming PC Al did back in December. <laughs> so I think it's genius. I think it's absolute genius that they're scooping up these publishers. And now we'll talk about the games. Let's get, let's get first and foremost out of the way halo infinite um i will just give my input and i'm eager to hear yours uh graphically uh, again I'll, I'll reference crackdown 3 this looks like nothing new but the tempting idea of a halo in a semi open world it's not totally open world because they're saying it's it's still kind of railsy in that there's a story and waypoints but you still can go around and explore and do all this uh i think that's very tempting from a halo perspective but i also wonder if it's time for microsoft to give that property to somebody that'll do something better (laughs) what do you think yeah yeah, I, I don't but not necessarily they need to give it to someone else because, but it's just like they really didn't, I feel, run with it. Like, now granted, the last one was a, uh, was a Halo 4, I think it was, right? Halo, yeah, 5. The, Halo 5. So the last one, obviously, it was still 343 three Industries, but I think, um, um, oh, who, who made it in the first place? Brain fart. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the, the, yeah, the the original Halo studio. I'm, I'm sure all the Halo fanboys are like shouting at me now. Why is your it's all right? You know uh, we need you well. Go yeah. ahead. Um, but yeah, uh, they helped out three four three kind of with that transition. So they're they're passing the baton, and you know they still made uh, you know a decent Halo. But with this one, I, I, I don't know. I, I I was watching it, and it's like okay, it 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 looks graphically sharper than previous Halos, but I'm I'm really not seeing anything new. Like, and I don't yeah. know if that that's supposed to be a good thing or a bad thing. Like maybe you know I'm sure Halo fanboys are like you know, you know maybe they're like yeah, just, it, we're getting the new Halo. And it's like okay, great. But from yeah. my perspective, it's just like I am. Yeah, I I love one of the analogies I read. It's like this is this is like getting the French fries without salt. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you enjoy French fries, but but it's it's kind of plain. It's they kind of plain. Salt. They need a little salt. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> I I'm with you. I was talking to uh, my pal uh, Captain Mike on Twitter. Captain Mike uh, from the Bad Fodder Figures, still my favorite podcast. Um, bad fodder figures, F O D D E R. Check them out. They're really great and they do great stuff. And Mike, Mike said the same thing. He's like, this looks, you know, like even graphically, he's like, it's, it's more halo. Um, and I'm, I'm with you. I I'm positive on an open world halo. I think that's the direction they need to go, but it sounds like it might be getting shoehorned in because they're like, Oh, we still got a story you got to do. And then you got to go to. And it's like, all right, if you have something to generate that need to go out, like even it's like, Hey, 
it's Halo, but you got to go eat a sandwich every once in a while. Uh, you know, <laughs> Halo survival. survival. <laughs> Something, you know? Uh, yeah. And it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I'm with Mike. Like, I thought it looked good. But part of me is like, and, and I don't get it, too, because I'm not a Halo fanboy. I put down whatever the last Halo was, whether it was four or five. I don't remember. I put it down in like 10 minutes. But like, and I see this one and I'm like, God damn it. It feels like Crackdown 3 all over again. Where it's like, hey, look, it's Crackdown, but you can destroy buildings. <laughs> in every building you see. And then it was like, whoa, closer to release, the cloud system didn't work for that. So you can destroy some buildings and it's Crackdown. Um, and it, like to me, it, it almost makes me think like I think Microsoft's genius right now is not in their exclusives. It's the software companies they are fronting, like bringing into the fold to make games for them. I think that's where their genius is. Like we throw away Halo, right? All right, let's just say that that's going to be a meh. It, it, it'll be fun, but it's probably going to be a meh. Uh, Avowed. A me- medieval trailer, but no gameplay. But that takes place in... Uh... Fuck, what was it? There was something really tempting about that that I thought was really, really cool. Um... I, I want to know more about uh, Avowed. Like, it's like, I was watching yeah, the trailer, it- like, okay... I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing so far from a trailer perspective. And there was some there was some gameplay. It looked really cool. Like the the you know, there was some sword little sword sword play in there. It looked good. And um it, then it the next so obviously it, outer It was light. It, there wasn't much. Uh Outer Worlds DLC signed me the fuck. Oh up. yeah. It's like love the hell out of Outer Worlds. I saw that. It's like, <laughs> yes, DLC, give it to me. Give me fucking ten more of those, and I'll pay five bucks each time if it gives me the the same Outer Worlds experience. That game was a masterpiece, and this is where I'm getting at with their genius of taking people like Obsidian under their under their wing. And like, I love the folks at Obsidian. I've I've interacted with some of them online, quote unquote, personally, and uh, they just they are so passionate about bringing back the games like that some of them worked on at Black Isle Studios like Baldur's Gate and stuff like that and and Fallout was another big one New Vegas obviously is what got them on the map and they're just they're just a great bunch and I love seeing them knock out like a trailer where I was like holy shit give me that um but let's go to the next one if I had to pick uh, this is my second most excited. The first one is coming up. Uh, the medium, dude. I haven't, I haven't had a Silent Hill feely game since I saw this trailer. What did you think? Yeah, yeah like <laughs> when I first started watching, I thought it was something else. Actually, Are you dying on me? <laughs> Yes. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yes, the uh, medium. Yeah, the medium. So w- when it first started, I'm like, you know, I, I thought it might have been the resident and, you know, the next Revit Evil one. Like, I thought it was going to be, you know, uh, which I, I think it's it called it The Village. Hill. And then it was like, oh, maybe Sign Hill. And then, then it went off into this, like, you know, suddenly split screens. Like, oh, is it a co op thing? And then, then it was like, well, no, wait a minute. They're doing the exact same thing. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then, in a real, like, it was a dual reality split screen render so it seems like during gameplay you see kind of like these two realities rendered side by side and you have to kind of you know, do your you know the old classic screen watch you know the days of like yeah. you golden eye whatever it's like, yeah. except now it's like you got to switch between kind of like our reality kidding. versus like this this uh, i don't know what you call it uh, ghost reality if you will silent hill reality it's like yeah. now you're not cheating now you're surviving yeah like I love that. I have not. I mean, have you seen that before? That's new to me. No, like the, the, at, at first, yeah, again, when it did the split screen thing immediately and I thought it was co-op, like, oh, are we going to get another, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was, it was a co-op escape. Uh, way out. 
Yeah, way out. The that way was, out. The prison like, escape yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like that. That's what instantly came to mind. But then it's like, no, wait, they're doing the exact same thing. This isn't co-op. Oh, it, you know, like they, you got to use two screens to figure out, you know, to get through like an obstacle essentially. Because you know, uh-huh. in the real world, there's nothing, but in the ghost world, you know, Silent Hill world, yeah. like there's monsters or something's like sticking out at you. So you got to like you know dodge it that way. And it's like, oh man, that is so cool. It's baller, dude. Like, I cannot wait to fucking play that game. Just because, again, like, it's like I just I, I just asked you, like, have we played that before? No, we haven't. That is something yeah, totally new. Yeah, completely new. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, I'm it's totally kind of taking, though. again, these concepts, uh, maybe from other, you know, you could say, like, you know, the whole split screen thing. But, like, in terms of a single player thing, it's like, no, this is this is really new. Yeah. And, again, it's it's Microsoft cherry kind of cherry picking the 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 genius stuff and this is where i think they're they're doing well like that's awesome uh fantasy star online um the second uh it's basically fantasy star online 2 yep mm-hmm. um it's already available if you have game pass you can play it now uh this is the first expansion that's coming um it's good expansion okay i missed that part yeah yeah it if you didn't play the game it's really hard to tell i think they're trying to reboot it uh just because uh, i would say what they have right now is a bit of a mess Mm. uh the game the gameplay is great but it's like when you get in the station there's like fifty thousand menu options and and just no explanation of what you're doing but when you actually get into the gameplay it's it's really fun <clears throat> so I, I look forward to seeing what they do there the next one really has me uh geared up so uh i'm sure you're familiar with it by now i've probably talked on this podcast many 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 times about warhammer 40k inquisitor martyr and yep. that's Diablo and Warhammer 40k and I love it. It's one of my favorite games. I still play it. I play it all the time <clears throat> and the developers God bless them just continue to expand and add to that game for free at this point aside from the the prophecy expansion which was like a year old by now but it's a great game so the Warhammer 40k game is uh, what is it? End times. I think so. Yeah. So, have you played Vermintide too? Uh, no, I've I've watched it, and you know, it's, it's kind of like that Left for Dead style play, which is pretty cool. Okay. But uh, but I have not so played it myself. The, but I get the gist. Yeah. So, yeah. So Vermintide and Vermintide 2. Vermintide was like a, a, a kind of poke to see if this would be good. Uh, Vermintide 2, great game. Really good game. But it's the medieval version of Warhammer where the planet that they're on, the the Skaven, uh, the rat people, and Chaos kind of band together, and, and that's it. They're taking over the world, and you're going to lose, and you're fighting against it. And it's a great, great time. Great, great game to play. Uh, End Times is the 40K version of that, which if you played Martyr and a lot of the other uh, 40K games, you know, it's like now you've got shotguns, machine guns, flamethrowers, laser swords, lightsabers, uh, and, you know, everything you could think of in a 40th millennium space war. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now they're bringing that into uh, the 40K world. I cannot wait because I had a shit ton of fun with Vermintide 2. Actually, I don't want to play it again now. Just talking about <laughs> it. What, what do you think of the trailer? Uh, again, it looked very warhammer uh, you know, for the little bits. And it's like interesting to see where it goes. Like, uh, <laughs> again, there wasn't really any gameplay to seem like just more trailer right. stuff. But it seemed it, like, is it a horde mode? Is it is it a campaign? Like, what is it? Yeah, I, I guess I want to learn a little more about it. Yeah, I'm with you. Owen. I want to hear more. I think they're trying. I think they're going to do a little bit of both. Uh, just because Vermintide 2 didn't really have 
I mean, it had a story, but it's like it required other players. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if they're gonna do like a solo campaign in this one. Um, either way, uh, I think they're just they've been doing such great stuff with the Warhammer license. And uh, now that I've been like reading reading the books and stuff, like yeah, can't wait. It's gonna be a <laughs> lot of fun. Uh yes, and then the next item, the last, last little child on the uh, list, new fable. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and like watching the trailer is like it's like okay, th- there's gonna be a twist here or a turn, and like what is this? And it's like you know, <laughs> and then it gets to the frog, and like, like okay, fable two. yeah, you know, fable two had that perfect mix of epic medieval you know, heroin or hero heroism and but it had the humor. Where I think Fable Three failed is it went all in on the humor and it was like, alright, why why am I even doing this? Aside from, you know, I'm in a mighty Monty Python sketch, which is great, but it's getting old ten minutes in. Um I think they nailed it in that trailer though. Like Tinkerbell, like, oh <laughs> here comes Bullfrog. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good now the uh, rumor uh, is supposedly this is going to be either a games as a service or uh i don't say like full-on mmo but like quasi mmo it, i don't know how, how better to put it i've heard i've heard similar i've tried to tickle the tentacles out to the connections i have and that's the best i'm getting is that it's a maybe. Um, it sounds like whispers coming out of the dev house. How how uh, true that is, I don't know. I don't want to bet money on it. I would say, and I think you would agree, it's probably the natural evolution of that series at this yeah, point. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, I think they tried. Didn't they try to do that? They did like an MMO that. That, that was. Uh, I was trying to remember, and I, you know, I didn't look it up beforehand. But I wanted to say, like, yeah, Legends, Legends, yeah, or something yeah, that, like that. yeah, yeah. So, but it, but it was again that quasi MMO. So it wasn't like you know you know forty million players in in a city type of MMO, but kind of like um. You know, those uh, kind of lobbies, kind of, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I say, you know, World of Warship-esque, you know, where it's like, you know, you go in, you want to do something, and you'll be put into an area with other players. Um, yeah. But it varies from time to time. I was thinking, like, play with, you know, maybe more like, yeah, maybe, like, see if these is a better analogy, where it's like, you go in, it's like, it'll stick you with other players. It's kind of, it's not really an MMO. It's weird, because MMO gets thrown around a lot, <clears throat> and for me, an MMO always is like, you know, the Warcrafts, the EverQuest, the, you know, <laughs> uh, you know Star Wars Galaxy style, where it's like, yeah, you have a ton of players on screen, and, and you know, I almost say like Guild Wars feels like kind of the last, you know, Guild Wars, Fantasy, yeah. Final Fantasy 14, you know, that, that to me, that's an MMO. Whereas when you start, you know, yes, there's massively multiplayer online. I get that part, but it, it, you're, you're actually putting them into an instance with only about maybe like 20 other people type of thing. It's like, eh, you're, you're skirting the line. It's like, yeah, you can play with anybody online, but yeah, it's, look, n- it's Conan again. Yeah, Conan yeah. 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 Or something like that where it's like, okay, it's like you're, you're on a smaller server instance or whatever with other players like uh, you know is that really an mmo as it is more a online multiplayer with a vast selection of players that could be put into the instance type thing yeah i mean and i'll be honest with you um i'm not sure where i sit on those like to me it's like either do an mmo or just be straight up, stop calling yourself an MMO, and we're like, we're the next Unreal Tournament, and you can run your own servers. Like, right. be straight up. Um, like, I, I would love, I would love to see an EverQuest-style MMO in the Fable universe. I think it's ripe for it. Mm-hmm. I really do. Um, I feel like if they go the Conan... On whatever the fuck it is, uh, Exiles route. Like, I, I'm not convinced that model works. 
Yeah, I'm like, really not. Well, it, it works to a point, and the, but the biggest problem is, and, and this is why you know I think we we really haven't seen like what I'll call true MMOs, you know, that we're used to mm-hmm. in in many years. Is it, it's such a risky venture? Like, it, like it, totally. you know, companies really totally. don't want to be putting money behind something that large anymore because of the of the risk factor unless it's you know there's like a huge ip or it's a sequel to something that they know is like okay there's an established player base yeah. that we can get in here where if it's a totally say, new ip but but yeah but but at the same time it's like okay you know you get into like either conan well granted conan is like you're signing on to a server specifically and then you know you inhabit that and or you can switch to another one the see if these route where it's completely automatic is I th- uh, that's where I kind of see this going the where it's, where it's going to be automatic, but it's, it's kind of like this small instance of like, yeah, you could be put, you know, there, there's millions of players online, but you're going to be put into a system, oh, yeah. an ecosystem, if you will, and, uh, with I'm totally you know, a handful cool. of others. I think see if see if thieves does it uh, brilliantly. I really do. Yeah. In that you do that. And everything you do in that session carries over with you to the next server that you yeah, go on. Yeah, or well, it's not even the server. It's like the next time you log on. So, you know, it's that, right. you know, I, I guess that's the definition of the games as the a service, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, you know, it allows for that multiplayer. You don't get these grand, you know, uh, uh, gatherings of, of players like like if anything that that's the thing you know that you you yeah, i say you, you go to wow on. Go yeah, to that, wow that, that's what you have to go to wow for but you know in in these environments like you know it's, it's you know you're talking the 15 20 people or whatever on the instance that you know can play with you or and or your friends yeah no i, uh, I i'm with you like <sighs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I, I would love to see more stuff like Sea of Thieves where I can log in and I might meet like 20 different people unless mm-hmm. some of my pals, my friend list, you know, are there with me. I'm totally cool with that. Uh, Conan, I feel like it's like Unreal Tournament servers uh, glorified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, well, well, like with with those, like I usually ended up going on private servers and you know, pl- you know, playing with you know, some people I knew and that I that I knew right. controlled the server because otherwise, like, yeah, you go on the public one, it's like absolute madness. You got the Chinese hackers everywhere. You got people invading your base at night and just wrecking everything. It's like that is right. not fun. But that's what I mean. Like it's it it's mayhem, and yeah. that's where I think that game failed. Sea of Thieves. You're getting you're getting the same experience every time you log in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, I, we'll see what happens. I would love to see Fable go the same route as Sea of Thieves. I I think that's a an amazing idea, uh, just because I think Fable will be a more <clears throat> and I, I don't ever want to see see if these become this but i think fable will be a more solo experience if mm-hmm. somebody wants to do that see if these should not be you're running a ship like yeah. you got you gotta have pals um so we'll see what happens i'm excited i'm super excited for it and that will bring us to the game of the month uh world of warships um i have been playing it quite a bit i love it uh, I have gotten a lot of team kill warnings because the people <laughs> I fucking log in with are morons. Uh, you know, I'm a torpedo boat. Why would you sail mm-hmm. in front of me? Mm-hmm. You fucking the eternal idiot. struggle. But, yes, it, it, like I like I'm sitting there going, I'm gonna hit this ship that is so far away because I have plotted this perfectly. And somehow, I know, you're going to sail in front of it, and I'm going to get in trouble. And they do! Mm -hmm. Like, I would have nailed that battleship, split them in two, but no. Somebody just thought it would be cool to just drive like an idiot in front of me. You know, whatever. It's the life of being, you know, a destroyer. (laughs) but no, it's uh, I would say after a month of playing uh, World of Warships for a free to play game, 
they do it right. A hundred percent, they do it right. Um, it's not a money grab. You can certainly pay for perky kind of stuff, you know, but like you can get that just by playing it. Sure. It's a, it's a great, great game. I, I really am having a lot of fun with it. It's kind of my distraction on uh, my lunch breaks. Uh, I love it. I, th- I think it's a really good game, man. Like I, I'm glad I, I've crashed your uh, stream a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a really good game, dude. I get why why you're so into it, and uh, I have a lot of fun with it. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to choose a new one, um, an, a new game of the month. But World of Warships, I think, was a a definite win. I would say Carrion would be the game of the month. Yeah, that's, I that's, want that's ev- a good one. I want play everyone it, now. <laughs> yeah, I want everyone to play Carrion. That is such a genius little game. Uh, again, Devolver Digital, like, they will swing for the fences and they miss. And some of their games like, okay. <laughs> All right, not for me. But Carrion, I think, if you like Metroidvania games, the reversal of, you know, character role and just the quality of the game, it is a top, top, top quality game very very good so highly recommend carrion let's play that for the next month i would love to hear what people think uh and now we shall go to the voicemail line i have to remember what the fuck i asked uh hold on one second holy shit jeremy uh from bad fodder figures 50 seconds ago sent me a virtual token. Tolkien is a free VR recreation of one of the most iconic scenes in Lord of the Rings where uh-huh. you get to you get to uh, sail your little rowboat between the Argonath. Oh, nice. I know. I'm like, mm-hmm. God damn it, Jeremy. Could you have waited five, <laughs> minutes? five fucking minutes so I wouldn't be on here? Uh, let me see. Because it was it was a half decent question uh, that I came up with at the last minute. The retro runs. All right. So we asked uh, if you're playing a retro slash classic game or have recently, which one? What brought you back? You know to that game. And uh, then we gave the uh, voicemail line. And we got a call from our long-lost, much-to-be-loved Uncle Fred. Let's hear what Uncle Fred French has to say. Fellas, what's going on? <laughs> uh, I don't know if it was you or maybe I got this Twitter app that likes to say, uh, hey, uh, Red, uh, five days ago this tweet was relevant, but I'm going to show it to you now so you can read it now and think, <laughs> wow, if I only read that five days ago, I could have been involved somehow, but now it's all we're done with. And, uh, <laughs> no, such to be you. Yeah, so anyway. Anyway, let's not blame everything on Twitter. Okay, maybe it was my fault. I don't even know. But anyway, we're all here again. Hello. Cheers to everyone. Raise your glass. Have a toast. Cheers, Fred. Drink up. Take it in. We're back. Listeners, we're back, listeners, tune in, tune in. Yeah. Okay, great question. Uh, retro question, playing what you're playing, what you're liking and stuff like that. Hey, it's obvious for me. If anybody says, what game do you like that was older that you're still playing? And so it's, it's, it's Lolo, man, Lolo. Give me the Lolo. Yeah. I got the Lolo love. Ted, they'll give me a little bit of a little bit of a hit there. You know, it's like, here's, here's, here's a little hit. But that's it. I, I want. I want to like my Lolo collection. Hello, Nintendo. If you're listening to this, I want my Lolo collection. There's other yeah. people like Lolo out there. I know there is. I know love it. Is. We're Lolo people. Come on, give it to us. You know, it's funny because I was playing. What was it? Like, I don't know, probably Fortnite. Which is all I play anymore. But except for Lolo, you hear that Lolo? I still love you. Anyway, I was playing. I was thinking, man, you know, the game I like to play that I haven't played in a long time. It's an old game. Never quick. Remember that game quick? Where, you know, it was in the arcade where uh, 
you know, you had that like uh, thing big of electricity or whatever, like bouncing around. It was trying to like shock you and stuff. You had to like throw on the screen so much. And, Here. And once you got it filled in so far, and then it went to the next thing, and you know, you got so far, and there was two of those little electrical things bouncing around. I think at one point I even got the three. I don't know. I was never that really good at it. And I enjoyed that game. Simple fun. Just simple, simplistic fun. All you're doing is throwing in a screen and avoiding the little blobby electrical thing. Yeah. yeah. I really like Quicks. Where's Quicks? Bring that back, man. I'd buy that. I'd buy that in a heartbeat. For the other Quicks lovers out there, let me know. You know what else I kind of messed with? I was thinking too. Whatever happened to Qbert, man? You know the little guy. Qbert, man. <laughs> Dude. Qbert, man. Bring it back. I mean, we have Pac Man. We have Big Doug. We have all these other classics. Where is Qbert at? Qbert's I mean, left on the side, man. dude. Let me know. Hey, the Yankees won. Let's go, Yankees. Yeah, that was six innings, but hey, we'll take the win. The win's the win. We're Captain one Mike going to kill you. It is 2020. <laughs> year. Yeah. Crazy seeing that empty stadium now. It's just weird. Anyway, that's all I got, guys. Hope everyone's doing well, doing great. <laughs> Keep your head up. March on. Enjoy life. And as always, Arriba Dirty. Arriba Dirty, Fred. Um, I'll just say it again. We love your calls, man. Love you. I'm so glad you're doing good. Sounds like you're you're hanging healthy in these crazy times. Uh, I'm with you, and I've heard rumors of a Lolo sequel. I'm going to do some more digging before I, you know, go more public on that. Uh, but I'm equally excited at the prospect as you are because I love a good puzzle game. Um, <clears throat> and I know Google played some nasty tricks on you, uh, but one of the things Google Translate mentioned from your call was Dig Dug. Now, I love Dig Dug. Nick, did you play Dig Dug? Oh, yeah. I played you know, play on the old arcade machine back in the day. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Dig Dug in the arcade, like, that was one of my favorites. And, like, a very simple concept, but a very good game. Um, but I, I agree with you, Fred, if we have to talk about these times where a warrior for mankind and everything that was good and righteous and the ability to just be able to jump from one step to another and do that with freedom uh, has been forgotten. It is the world of Qbert. Qbert fought for us all, for our ability to walk down stairs and pyramids. And uh, no, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm just being stupid. But uh, I, I loved Qbert in the arcades. Um, I think it was a a simple, but the way the game was made, it was very uh, very challenging concept, and. I'm kind of shocked, like, that that never really, it hasn't gotten its remake. Like, I don't know about you, Nick, but I'm with Fred. Like, everything else has gotten its, like, time in the sun for a good remake. Why not Qbert? True. Really? That's all you got? It's, it's, uh, it's all I got. Why, why, why can't we not have a new Qbert? Reimagine Qbert. <laughs> No, we're with you there, Fred. Um, but other than that, you know, we're all healthy. We're all good. And uh, I'm glad to hear it sounds like you're doing the same. So uh, take care and keep calling in. We love you, Fred. And uh, all right. So I think this will wrap it up. Obviously, we're running almost two hours here. But uh, it's been a while. I've been on vacation. I've been pulling a Kyle. <laughs> y'all remember, remember Kyle. He's still on vacation. Uh, no, but we love him. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I just want to give, uh, we're going to, you know, end the show with some shout outs. Uh, big shout outs to the fans, everybody listening to us. And uh, we love y'all. And I hope everybody is staying safe, staying healthy, and staying courteous to the people around you. Uh, big shout out to the bad fodder figures, uh, Mike, Matt, Eric, Jeremy. We love y'all, and um, 
I hope you're all good. You know, I listen to you all every week, and I try to call in, but you, yeah, I'm old. And I, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love you guys. And uh, <clears throat> Married to the Games, Gabe and crew, love you all. I hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, I haven't listened in a while, and I'm, I'm kind of falling behind. Los, my brother over at the talking place he's starting to get kicking up again <clears throat> and um yeah you and i still got to do like a game of thrones episode dude we've been talking about this for a while um and then finally uh denny and and company over at tap the craft um you just give me more excuses to get fancier beers and more drunk uh, <laughs> but no, I, I love you guys. I hope everybody you know that we listen to is is healthy. Everybody listening to us, I hope you're you know just doing the right thing. Be careful, be cautious. Um, you know, I, I don't want to go too too real with this whole thing, but you know, Nick and I were talking before this. You know, we're old enough to remember what it was like when we realized the uh, AIDS virus was something that could affect everybody. And uh, it it was just a matter of we didn't know, you know, people didn't know what it could do, and I feel like we're in a similar state. <clears throat> and I'm just saying, you know, like immediate uh, morbidity, you know, just because people don't die from this doesn't mean that there might be, you know, more catastrophic effects. So let's just be careful be cautious to ourselves to our families and to everybody around you like we say that we've said this the past few episodes but just you know be human right that's right stay human be human be human just you know somebody doesn't have to agree with you but they're still a living breathing person with, with friends and family let's just you know look out for each other we're all we got you know, especially with the Pentagon just acknowledging that UFO, like, shit's gonna get real. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have aliens on my bingo card. I didn't either. Like, my 2020 uh, bingo card is punched the fuck out. <laughs> but, uh, no, everybody, uh, just, as we always say, you know, be cool to each other, have fun, play games, and, uh, what's the phrase, Nick? I forget. Peace. That is not the phrase. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what. Don't be oh. dicks. Don't be dicks. <laughs> and we will catch you all next time.